Casa Juan Diego. It's named after Juan Diego, to whom Our Lady of Guadalupe appeared, you know, 400 plus years ago. Uh, we called it Juan Diego uh, because of that, to serve refugees from wars in Central America and new immigrants from many countries. Uh, for a few hundred dollars, we rented a, uh, an old storefront uh, to feed the hungry and clothe the naked. It was the ugliest building in Houston, but it was ours. And, you know, one sink and one toilet, and that was it. Uh, and we prayed and told people what we, do, what we were doing, and they helped. Documented to have no rights, no identity, uh, no family, no language, no job. They're really people without a country, in a way. Uh, and but thanks be to God, we're able to provide help to many of them uh, that come to us. Mark and Louise Zwick started this house with a little building and a huge mission. Honor the story of Juan Diego by serving immigrants and refugees. And one by one, they came. From Mexico, Honduras, Guatemala, somehow finding their way to Casa Juan Diego. With only donations, Casa Juan Diego has grown from one house to 15. The complex now covers an entire city block. And the free services it gives to those who can't get them anywhere else is almost never-ending. One of the criticisms of the Catholic worker movement is that it's not practical. But we think it's the opposite. is It's very practical. It's very simple. You know, there's no payroll, uh, uh, no salaries. You know, the money comes in and the money goes out. It's rather simple. Uh, and the, the fact that uh, voluntary poverty is, you know, the great secret of, of the worker movement. Not anyone being paid is impressed as contributors uh, who want to be part of this effort that deals directly with the poor. I got here, I didn't have any shoes. That's when someone told me about Casa Juan Diego. They opened the door, they let me stay here, they gave me food and clothes. Many of our first guests were young people sent out of Central America by their parents to avoid recruitment by either side of the conflicts. If all we had had to do was pay our rent and refer people to agencies, our work would have been easier. There were, however, no agencies to which we could refer the undocumented or even some citizens. We had to take responsibility ourselves to try to help refugees begin anew with the help of the good Lord and so many who have come to join us as full-time Catholic workers or part-time volunteers over the years. This approach is called communitarian personalism. Doctors came to volunteer in our medical clinic. Soon we started our bilingual newspaper, The Houston Catholic Worker, El Trabajador Católico de Houston. Economic refugees from Honduras and later Mexico began to come to ask for help as well. Pregnant immigrant women asked if we could take them in. Battered women asked for help. This woman says her son is sick, and so is her husband. She says she had nowhere else to turn. I want to thank all the people here. I wish them good health so they can keep helping people. Thanks to them giving us food, we can use the money to pay rent or something else. We're still here, serving Christ in the poorest of the poor. But recently, so many who come to ask for help are sick and injured. Daily, we're presented with people who are seriously ill, mentally or physically, or who have broken limbs, or no limbs, or even more, broken heads or broken backs, or they've been shot in the head or shot in the back by thieves, and there's no one to receive them. Daily, Houston hospitals call us to pay for the cost of housing the sick and injured so they can discharge them from the hospital. There is an epidemic of neglect. All of these people have been abandoned by society.